championship week is upon us, which means we are getting closer and closer to the college football playoffs. There's a lot of teams that have the right to be in the playoffs. The playoffs are expanded to 12 teams for the first time ever in college football. So there's a lot of discussion. Who's getting in? Who should be left out? Do we count the the conference championship games in our consideration for who gets into the playoffs? And how much does that matter? Let's talk about all of this and so much more here on Rising to the Occasion. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. This is Rising in the Red Zone here as a Rising to the Occasion production presented by Herd at Sports. Very excited to get into this and talk college football because we love college football and the season's almost over. We're not going to have a whole lot of time to talk about what's going on in the world of college football, but I got Jeremy here with me to talk. And Jeremy, I mean, there is so much going on in the discussion when it comes down to it for the college football playoffs, for championship week coming up. Uh, and of, of course, we'll talk, even talk a little bit of the Heisman race too. But uh, I mean, get, man, it's this is an exciting time of year. It's a sad time of year knowing that you're this far, uh, you know, past college football. You're almost done with college football. And, you know, it's it's exciting though, because we get to talk who's, who's worth being a, crowned a champion and who's not. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is sad because it seemed like college football started like a couple of weeks ago and like you said it's almost gone already it's unfortunate but i mean hey this is just a big road ahead of us and you said it the best coming down to the title games and everything like that this is going to be some big time implications to who's going to be locked in for these playoff situations and for all we know like like i said to you before we went on the air josh i mean with some of these teams that you can see that we're going to be talking about tonight they can definitely be sitting really really well in the driver's seat or depending how their week goes coming crunch time towards the titles i mean it it can definitely flip in the flip of a switch or in the blink of an eye just because we can be talking about some of these teams and the next thing you know it they're watching the college playoffs from their couch or they're playing golf or whatever the situation is josh but i know it's definitely crazy i know like you said we're gonna be talking about a little bit of the heisman stuff but it's definitely one of those moments to where you wish that some of these candidates are going to be talking about they all sincerely deserve a Heisman, but I mean, only we only get to pick one out of the bunch. So, Josh, I know we got a lot to talk about. So, I'm going to cut the chit, cut the chit chat, and let's get rolling. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's just crazy when you think of all the teams that have a chance of getting in. And let me just start mm -hmm. by saying this is why we here on this podcast talked about hey, let's not widen widen this open to just uh, an entire twelve teams because now we've got chaos of. Do they really deserve to be in there? I suppose this team deserves it more than this one, but I don't think any of these teams deserve it. And you know what? This has been the craziest year. It seems like the year full of the most parody, and it's been very insane. But before we get into it, first got to mention sponsors of this episode, and that is Built Bar. Built Bars are amazing because if you're like me, you're always looking for ways to fuel your day, but without all the extra sugar and empty calories, that's where Built Bar comes into play because they're not your average protein bar. These things taste amazing, and they're packed with the good stuff. Built Bars are low in sugar, high in protein, and deliciously satisfied. Whether you're hitting the gym, running errands, or just need a quick snack, Built Bars have you covered. They come in tons of mouth-watering flavors like cookies and cream, mint brownie, coconut uh, coconut almond, and uh, you know one of my favorites was even the birthday cake one. They got all these sweet, sa you know, savory, uh, sweet. They've got savory. They've got all kinds of different amazing flavors. Uh, but they they've got that perfect chewy texture that's not too dense or dry. It doesn't kind of feel like you're chewing on sand like some protein bars give you. And personally, I love keeping a built bar in my bag. It's my protein go-to when I need to pick me up between meetings or when I'm heading out to work. Plus, they're only 130 calories and 17 grams of protein. So you get all the energy without all the guilt. So if you're ready to upgrade your snack game, head over to built.com and use the code rising two for 10% off your first order. Trust me, once you try one, you will be hooked into built bar built bar helped me get completely off candy bars. I don't really eat candy at all anymore. And that's a huge thanks to built bar. Again, go over to built.com and use the code rising two for 10% off your first order absolutely amazing protein that tastes as good as it works go ahead and grab it and grab it uh grab your first one today feel good about every bite thank you to built bar for sponsoring this episode and jeremy let's go ahead and get into this man uh, i mean so much and and 
it was hard for us to, to really break this down. And how do we want to organize this episode? We're just going to start off by talking about the teams. Uh, I mean, looking through the list, if you had to pick today what teams you would lock in right now, the crazy thing is there's not a ton of teams that I would say in a 12-team playoff deserve to be locked in. Now, I, I'll go through my list of, of teams. Obviously, Oregon undefeated, going to the Big Ten championship game, most likely going to win that game. I believe they're favored. Sure. Yeah. So they're going to the Big Ten championship game against Penn State. So that's that's locked in. Oregon can't get themselves out of it. They've, they put themselves in the driver's seat. They are going to the, the college football playoff. Texas is another team with one loss on the season to Georgia. It, it stunk, you know, losing to Georgia, but then you realize that it's Georgia. It's not a bad loss. And, you know, finalizing your season with a good win over Texas A&M, you finally get one ranked win on the season. Congratulations, Texas, for your one ranked win all season long. Just a little bit of a jab towards those Longhorns. But I feel like Texas has done good enough to lock themselves in. And then you, you go down the list, I think Penn State making their way to the college, sorry, making their way to the Big Ten Championship game with their only loss coming to Ohio State, even though their Ohio State loss was not a good one and they've had some ups and downs throughout the season. I think Penn State's one of those teams that have progressively gotten better. I think because they are going to the Big Ten Championship game, as long as they're able to not get completely blown out, I feel like they're a lock. Currently number three in the in the AP top twenty five too. Notre Dame. This is one that I think before the season, if you told me Notre Dame had one loss on the season and it was to NIU, I'd be telling you, yeah, there's no way they're going to the college football playoff. But you know what? I think that the way that they won against USC, I think USC is a good team. Okay, and and they they lost most of their games after leading in the fourth quarter. That's something that people don't realize. USC was in most of those games. I think Penn State beating USC earlier in the game, earlier in the season, was a good game for them to win. A good win. I think Notre Dame, the same thing. I give that to them. Now you start to get into murky water because who do you really lock in and who do you not lock in? Of course, I think a lot of this is going to come down to who wins the conference championships. I think there are certain teams like SMU. I think SMU deserves to be in the college football playoffs. Uh, you look at their season and the season that they had, they had the three-point loss to BYU, who ended up being a pretty good team, really only one game away from being in the Big 12 championship game. Personally, I, th I think that's a team, SMU, you have to lock them in. IU, their only loss was to, to Ohio State. And honestly, I, mean, I know it was a big loss, but Jeremy, you and I talked about this. They were two plays away from being in that game, you know, and, and making that a one score loss. So I personally think that, you know, when you get to the questionable teams, I think the, the for sure lock ins, you have to lock in Oregon, Texas, Penn State, and Notre Dame. Outside of that, I, I really don't know. It's a lot of speculation. Personally, I lock in SMU 100%. I think they had a good season. They're going to the ACC championship game. And if you're going to include one ACC team, I, I think they're the ones to include in it because I think they've looked the best. IU not going to a championship game. So where, where do you put them? I, I think you have to put IU in, in the champion, or sorry, in the playoffs as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in the exact same boat as you, Josh. I mean, you look at a lot of these teams in this kind of situation to where you just look at who, at least what we're predicting, to see into the playoff picture. Like, it's so hard to – I wouldn't say it's definitely hard. It's just – it's it's definitely difficult, I'll put it that way, to try and get a definite lock-in. But, I mean, you look at some of these teams like – like Indi like Indiana, for example, that was one that I was definitely with like you just said, we were definitely really high energized about that just throughout their entire season and just being able to see what they were doing. Then obviously the outcome against Ohio State. That was I'm not I'm not saying that it was to be expected, but I mean you look at what Indiana has put up with all year, then just look at what they just did most recently this last Saturday. And being, it was definitely at least nice to see Indiana bounce back. I mean, I understand it was against, correct me if I'm wrong, it was against Purdue, correct, Josh? Purdue, but, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Exactly. When, when the Oaken bucket, I mean, that's, that's big for Indiana too. And my, mm -hmm. my question is, even though they don't make it to the college football playoff, I mean, regardless of what, what happens personally, I think they're one of those teams. I, I lock into the playoffs. I think they've had a good enough season all season long. They beat whoever was on their schedule. The only, again, the only game that, isn't in there, you know, that, that they didn't go their favor was Ohio state. And again, I, I think they were 
if I know the playoff committee is not going to look at this, but if you look at that game against Ohio State, they really were two game two plays away from a one score game there, and and hey, that that means you have a chance to win. So personally, I I think Indiana has to be one of those teams that I'm locking into the playoffs. Yeah, I I 100 agree. I mean it. It definitely didn't go the way that they wanted to, like I said, but there's still a definite lock in team that um, that definitely deserves a rightful spot in the playoffs. But I mean, looking on the other side of the things like um, another team that I do want to talk about is um, Ohio State. I know just obviously coming across with just beating Indiana, like just what we were talking about. I know that was a really big situation is but. Then just going to this past weekend, then losing to Michigan, to where the the Michigan they haven't been looking like what they have been compared to last year. I know it's a whole complete different squad, a lot of different people, and et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, just it was definitely a complete flip of a switch for Michigan's perspective coming against into the horseshoe and beating Ohio State by three thirteen. That was definitely not something that I was. Well, and, anticipating and without their i mean michigan was coming in without their their key players like most notable exactly i mean they're they're, they're big tight end why am i draw, drawing a name uh loveland words or loveland yeah 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 so i mean uh, you know the, the, just the fact that they don't even have him it's it's just insane to me that michigan is coming in you know on one their their worst year that they've had in a long time Definitely, and then on sure. top of that they don't even have a lot of their key playmakers. They don't have any kind of any kind of answer at quarterback. They don't really have that guy out at at wide receiver that they can rely on. I mean, I, I'm looking at at Michigan and I'm thinking, you know, this is if if Ohio State can't even beat them when they're out a guy like Colston Loveland, then I mean, what what more can you expect from Michigan? I mean, they, they played a phenomenal game, phenomenal 100%. game plan to come into that one and win because Michigan had no, no right winning that game whatsoever. You know, and I, I would argue that, you know, Ohio state's one of those teams. I'm not sure that they're locked in for me. I, I they're a two loss team. You lost to, to Oregon, which was one of your ranked matchups. One of the, one of the good, best wins on your season was Penn state. I think the best win on your season was against Indiana just because you beat them by so much. The fact that the, you beat them by 23 points said something about that win and this is a good indiana team that's not taking anything away from ohio state that was a good win but then you lost to michigan like that i mean they should be in the playoffs and i think based on what i think will happen with championship week i think they're in the playoffs but i'm not sure if i lock ohio state into the playoffs personally i sincerely don't lock them into the playoffs i mean i, I think they will be there yeah they I, will I just don't lock them in really yeah, that's what I mean. Like, like uh, you look at the big name, obviously, Ohio State. We're all so used to them being complete dominant like they are every single year. Then, I mean, everyone loves seeing that famous Ryan Day smile. But, I mean, it's definitely one of those moments to where you look at the aspect of how it's been for them this year. And just, I don't lock them in. Like, as much as it is really surprising to say and look at what they've done this entire season, it just they just haven't stuck out to me like they usually do in in past years. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of criticism about this, but I mean, you, you see Ohio state come into the horseshoe or go into their competitive stadium, wherever they go. And you see them steamroll, not making it 14, 17 games or 10, 13 loss games against Michigan. Who's been a complete nothing against Michigan, but they've been a complete dumpster fire for what we've seen this year, especially obviously, like you said, uh, compared to years back. But I mean, I'm in the same boat with you, Josh. I don't lock Ohio State in, but I mean, I hope they can prove me wrong, but we'll just see how it goes for the. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't lock them in, but I, I think they will be in. Though. I think they'll be in. I, I don't lock them in just because I think some chaos could happen, I suppose. But I, I, I don't see a scenario where they don't get in. I think they're very likely to get in. I didn't look up their odds to get in, but it's interesting. I, I think when it comes down to the three loss teams, or even Boise State and UNLV, those mm. are where it starts to be, you know, you got a group of five team in there. So Boise State, UNLV, they they fight for the Mountain West title game. Personally, I think they're a, a, they're a team, both of them, a, a team that deserves to get in. UNLV is a little harder for me to, to convince you just because, you know, with everything that they've lost, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe UNLV doesn't get in, but with only two losses on the season and winning 
the Mountain West, I think I think they get that bid. And they're one of those teams that specifically, I think if Boise wins, I think Boise's locked in. You know, with the one lost being to Oregon. I mean, you lost to Oregon. What was that game? That was only like a very close game, wasn't it? I think it was a seven point game, if I remember correctly. Three point game. Three, three point, point game. game. It was thirty four, thirty seven. I knew it was really close. Point. Yeah, it was a one score game, and, and and so I mean, you lost. That was the, your only loss in the season was to the number one, and currently number one undefeated Oregon Ducks. That is your one loss if you're Boise State. And then, I mean, honestly, that to me, I feel like they might might be a lock in to me, regardless of if they win their their title game. But uh, of course, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're not a big enough brand to lock them in. So, I, I mean, I don't think I lock them in based on their odds. If they win Mountain the Mountain West title game, I think they deserve a bye week in the first week because I think they look better and have done better throughout their season than either one of the Big Twelve teams. So Iowa State, Arizona State, they're another team, two teams that I will not lock in. I think the winner of that Big 12 title game gets locked into the playoffs. I don't think they deserve that first round bye over Boise State if they win the Mountain West. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, you look at like talking about Iowa State and Arizona State going back to that. I mean, this is definitely one of the best seasons that Iowa State has definitely seen in the last couple in the last little bit of time. I mean, it, it definitely is great to see, like, even for us being a local team outside of, like, talking about, like, Iowa or or anybody else realistically. But, I mean, it's definitely one to see – I mean, definitely roll clones. I mean, I love seeing Iowa State being really successful. And don't get me wrong, they're usually a really successful football team. But, I mean, this year in particular, I mean, Jack Tri Stadium has just been definitely rocking. And it's truly unbelievable. Like, but don't get me wrong, Josh. The, the Arizona, Arizona State has definitely been also on the definite top and topic as come to the Big 12 title game. I mean, I know this is definitely going to be one that's really, really watched, if I had to sincerely guess. I mean, I know Iowa State fans, they they have a really, really great fan base down in Ames. And no matter is it no matter where it's going to be located at for the Big 12 title game, they're that definitely be in Dallas. I believe that's it will in be the in Jerry's Dallas. world still. Okay, then knowing Iowa State fans, I mean, don't get me wrong, Arizona State fans also, they'll both travel. It'll be a really, really good matchup for this Big 12 title game. But it, I'm just going to flat out go out and say that if I had to pick one team between Ar- – Arlington, sorry. Arlington, yeah, still, yeah, in the, same, still, same still in the state of Texas. But, I mean – Same thing, it's <clears> Dallas. <throat> it's Texas. But, I mean, like if I had to sincerely give my prediction for winning the Big 12 title game, I would love to see the Clones win it. I mean, Iowa State, they definitely been – they deserve it with how versatile and and just even their statistics and just their style of play that they've done this entire season. I sincerely love seeing Iowa State dominate, and I know they got a lot of big things coming in their program and just having a new facility and just some upgrades and stuff like that. But like I said, nothing against Arizona State. I'm just saying that just because I'm not trying. I'm being a little bit biased, just being from the state of Iowa. But I mean, Iowa State they deserve in my opinion, a lock-in just for how dominant they've been this entire year. Now, here's a question with Georgia right now. Do you lock Georgia in? Because let's say they lose the SEC championship to Texas. Now Texas redeems the one loss on their season. They're basically undefeated. I mean, you can look at it that way because they, they redeemed themselves with that loss. So if Texas were to win the SEC championship game, which is a possibility, and Georgia loses. Now they're a three-loss team. Do you do you put Georgia in? Because I mean, they'd also have some quality wins. But yeah, I, I just I, that's that's one of those teams. I think it's really hard just to lock in. I, or or does the discussion now become between Georgia, South Carolina, Bama, and Ole Miss? Because those are all three-loss teams from the same conference. Now who's going to get in? I think there's a lot of arguments that Bama should get in as a three-loss team. Uh, you know, hey, we should we should put. Ole Miss and here's here's one thing I saw Lane Kiffin put this I think he put a lot of thought into the tiebreaker with mainly Ole Miss Alabama and South Carolina so he this is a long note that he put together he said after all the chaos yesterday there looks to be three bubble teams fighting for the last remaining spot in the playoffs all three are you know yeah all three are nine and three and represent the ACC or sorry the SEC if my brain will work for me today there's Ole Miss Alabama and South Carolina South Carolina lost to both of them, and their best win is against Clemson. Ole Miss and Alabama, best win is against Georgia. Georgia beat Clemson 34-3. to To say that South Carolina is out, 
and it's between Ole Miss and Alabama. So just kind of doing head to head is what uh, Kiffin's doing. And I think that's the best way to do it. And he's making a lot of sense here. Then he goes on to say Ole Miss has nine wins outscoring their opponents, 390 to 94. That's plus 296. Bama has nine wins outscoring their opponents, 371 to 119. That's plus 252. In three losses, Ole Miss was outscored 73 to 60, so only by 13 total in all three losses, where Alabama was outscored 88 to 55, which was 33 points total. I mean, you're kind of seeing this. Common opponents both beat Georgia. Rebels won by 18. Bama only won by 7. Both beat South Carolina. Rebels won by 24. And Bama only won by 2. Uh, Alabama beat LSU by 29. And Ole, Ole Miss lost by 3 in overtime. So there's finally one in the favor uh, of, of Bama. But then Bama beat, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Ole Miss beat Oklahoma by 12. Bama lost by 21 to Oklahoma. So clearly, he says, you know, clearly Ole Miss should be in the playoff over Alabama, but Bama is the bigger brand and more likely will get in over Ole Miss. Just Lane Kiffin calling it as it is. And I, I can really appreciate him for one, putting all that together, two, doing everything in his power. And his guys are on social media. They see that. Mm -hmm. They see their coach fighting for them. I think that's awesome to see that because, you know, and he puts a really good effort into you know, the, the evidence showing, you know, the stats showing that, hey, we deserve it over South Carolina, obviously, and uh, over Alabama even. And and I think he, he does a really good job of making that case for him. Lane Kiffin, my applause are to you right now, just because that is literally the, the best way you can sincerely break it down. And I 100% go with Lane Kiffin. If I give it to Ole Miss. I mean... Yes, they are not like an Alabama. They're not like a Georgia. They're whatever. You can say what you want, but I mean, statistically wise and just looking at what they've been able to do, hey, at least Ole Miss didn't lose to Vandy. I mean, that was, that was, that's still obviously going to be in the talks about. But I mean, Ole Miss is definitely one of those teams that you got to be, even just people you just talk to just in general and talk about Ole Miss, they're that sneaky good football team that can definitely come out and surprise you out of the woodwork. I mean, I understand we're used to seeing Alabama, Georgia running the table and blah, 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 blah. But I mean, Josh, you can probably agree as much as I, much with me that when it comes down to this and just seeing what, the report card has been like for Alabama and uh, South Carolina, even for example, it's just not in their favor. And I realistically think Ole Miss deserved the spot and we can definitely get some different competitiveness comparing to these teams that are so, I wouldn't say so used to, but they get at least a general concept of an idea that we're used to playing Alabama, for example, in the first round or whatever round that you're that you're designated into. I'd like to see something different. I know it's it's definitely been a little bit, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but Ole Miss hasn't been in the playoff talk for a long time. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I mean, uh, they've been in a talk, but then I feel like they kind of do what they did this year, and they just lose games that they shouldn't. They lose to yeah. Kentucky and LSU, both teams not good. Kentucky nowhere near the top. LSU ended with eight wins eight on wins. the season now, which – still looks like a good win uh yeah. or, you know if, if you're able to beat them but losing to them it that means a little little bit less you know where alabama you know you compare the two alabama lost to two teams that were that ended the season 500 in oklahoma and vanderbilt which it pains me to put those two in the same sentence comparing them together you, know, you look at teams like tennessee where they had that one loss that they shouldn't have had bounce back and keep on winning and have, having a win over an alabama help help propel them mm -hmm. you know and, and fought pretty much with georgia until georgia just was too much to handle that was their their second loss you know and so i think you look at other teams around where you compare them to Bama, you know, and I, I, I'm right there with you. I agree with Lane Kiffin. I think Ole Miss, if you're going to break it down, and let's just say that there's a three-way tie between Ole Miss, South Carolina, and Alabama. I think Alabama is going to be pushed up there because of the brand that they yeah. are. 
Yeah. And I think South Carolina has been gaining the traction because of how good they've looked in the last several weeks. And especially after beating South Carolina and really just kind of, I mean, the score doesn't show it necessarily, but it felt like they manhandled Clemson in, in a big way. And specifically, Lenora Sellers, uh, that dude, you know, he did he did some special things. Mm-hmm. 164 yards through the air, 166 yards on the ground, just kept on using his legs, two touchdowns. Lenora Sellers uh, really made that look good. So, you know, with, with that, I think you've got three lost teams. Let's say... You've got SMU beats Clemson, uh, you know, so now are you penalizing Clemson because of, of the, the title game? Not necessarily for them. I guess that's probably a bad, bad example, but, uh, let's say Texas, Georgia, Georgia has three losses of Texas wins. Are you going to penalize Georgia for having that third loss being in the championship game? I think that means something, you know, like, I don't know. How do you look at that? And then, you know, there's other teams where Arizona state or Iowa state could be in the talks regardless, but because they lose their third game in the championship game, you're going to take that away from them. You know, there, there's a lot of talk that's going to be coming down to it. And I think the biggest talk is what Lane Kiffin was talking about. You've got Bama, Ole Miss, and South Carolina all kind of in the, in the discussion. And I really don't think all three of them deserve it, but I do think one of the three deserves it. And you've got to, you've got to narrow that down. And I think Lane Kiffin did, did the best by just doing head to head comparisons, doing, so. you know, com- comparisons. So literally we faced the exact same teams and look at the outcomes. Alabama beat LSU. Sure. We barely lost to LSU. And, but outside of that, everything else we've, we've done above and beyond what, what Alabama has done. So, you know, I, I'm kind of right there in the boat and where it's just, I mean, it's it's tough because I think the teams you're looking at right now, I think you've got Oregon, Texas, the winner of the ACC championship game, whether it be SMU or Clemson. And if SMU loses personally, I think they deserve to be in it. And then you've got the winner of Boise and UNLV, I think, in the Mountain West title game. I think they need to be in it. You've got the winner of Arizona State, Iowa State, Big 12 game. I think they need to be in it. That's up to six. I think Penn State deserves to be in it regardless. I think Notre Dame deserves to be in it now. They have that one loss and really bounced back and started looking like a better team since then. Indiana, I think, deserves to be in it. Uh, they have the one loss to Ohio State. And then you've got Ohio State. I, 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 I'm not, I wouldn't lock them in, but I think they deserve it. Now you got Tennessee. Tennessee deserves to be in there. That brings you down to 11 teams that I just now said I think deserve to be in it. So now it comes down to that South Carolina, Alabama, and Ole Miss. Who are you putting in? I think I have to go with with what Lane Kiffin said. And I, I've got to pick Ole Miss if it's me. Hmm. I mean, exact same boat. I mean, Lane Kiffin, you you literally have he said the best and broke it down literally perfect. I give it Ole Miss, but I know probably for for some for our luck, Josh Alabama will probably still make it into the college playoffs. But rightfully, in my opinion, and speaking for yourself as well, we both want to see Ole Miss definitely into this college playoff picture. But I mean, we'll have to find. We'll just wait and find out. Well, and, and you know how I feel about it, truthfully? I feel that how many teams did I say was my max of what I'd be willing to go to? Do you remember? I said six to eight, six or eight. That's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of what I have always said. I'm looking through here, and I really only think there's eight teams that deserve to get in there. Hmm. Um, so Oregon, Penn State, uh, the winner of uh, the winner. Let's, let's say automatically the winner of the Big Ten, uh, Big 12. ACC and the winner of the SEC that you've got four right there. Mm-hmm. Now you just pick out out of the rest of the group who deserves to be in more and is is one of the losers. I think, for example, uh, the loser of the Big Ten championship game. Personally, I think that that should not account against them in an eight team playoff. Uh, and if you did an eight team playoff, I think you also. Uh, include possibly even the SEC champion, just because I think be- between the Big Ten and the SEC, there's no doubt those are the two best conferences. I think most people would agree, the two sure. toughest conferences. For sure. Uh, now, now you start to dive out outside of that, you know, and that's where I would say your Notre Dame might get picked. Uh, I think this year's Tennessee would be in the discussion. I think Indiana deserves to be in the discussion with only one loss on the season. Yeah, I, I look around at at that, you know, and of course Boise State if they ended up winning. I think they'd be in the discussion. When LV winning, I don't think would be in the discussion in an 18 playoff. Uh, Boise State would be. You know, I, I think the 18 playoff makes it very easy to pick, even in a chaos, you know, in a very chaotic year like this year. I, personally, I think eight teams is where it should have been. So whenever we get Josh Pate, uh, the Crane and Company guys, and then ourselves on that college football commissioner role, 
that joint co- uh, college football commissioner role, then uh, we will run college football the way that it should be. And there will be yes, less sir. questionings. There will be no debating because you will have to listen to us because this is now a dictatorship in the college football. Welcome to it. It's much better. You're welcome. And guess what? We're going back to a BCS mm-hmm. system where we use points that are put into a, a computer and that decides it for us rather than doing all this crap of voting and emotion can get tied up into voting. But I mean, it's it's exciting. It's also just frustrating looking at it, knowing that a three-win team, mm. a three-win team could win a national mm. championship. That's mm. that's crazy to me. That's nuts. So that's that's where I think that you know, th- this this 12-team playoff is getting out of hand. But I am extremely excited if Notre Dame hosts a game and it's like seven degrees up in South Bend oh, and oh. snowing. And let's say they pick up, huh, who would who would be on that schedule? Uh, let me look because I know I, I sent you a picture earlier. I wonder who was projected on that against Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, you did. If SMU, I don't think SMU would be there because they'd be an ACC championship contender. I don't know. Let's say like Tennessee comes up to South Bend or even Georgia comes up to South Bend. Or let's say that, let's say that Bama or Ole Miss get in there and they come up to South Bend. I don't, I don't know who the possibilities are of who would be matched up there. Even Arizona State coming up to South Bend. They wish they'd be in Arizona. That is that is very impressive. Uh, it's a it's a very enticing picture to see. Even in Bloomington, Indiana, it was snowing yeah. this past weekend. If you get one of those teams up there, I mean that does make a difference. And people yeah, don't get that. That makes a difference. There's a reason why we talk about the weather, and you're going to see that come into play. We see it in the mm-hmm. NFL all the time. Now you're going to see it coming over to college football. College football. But Jeremy, let's talk about this Heisman race. And I'm not going to take too much time with you know, discussing who we think should be in the race. Cause we, we just mentioned beforehand, uh, you know, before we started hitting that record button and, uh, you know, we, we both have the same top four and I know that, but I'd like to hear your rankings of the top four. I think you and I both agreed Ashton Genty, Travis Hunter, Cam Ward, and Dylan Gabriel all deserve to go to New York for that Heisman race. And I think there's others that, you know, you could throw in there as being in contention. I think those are your four front runners. And it's very evident that those are your four front runners. Who do you think deserves to win that 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 Heisman trophy? Realistically, Josh, my honest opinion and who I think deserves to win the 2024 Heisman trophy. It's I'm just gonna fly go it. I'm gonna go with Ashton Jaunty. I mean, you just look at what Ashton Jaunty has done throughout this entire year. And like I said, don't give me nothing against, obviously, any of these Heisman candidates. I mean, we literally wish, at least I do, I wish all of these guys could win a Heisman. But it obviously ain't that easy. I mean, he's already reached a goal of 2,000 yards rushing through 11 games this season. I mean, I think it was like close to like, 2060 some odd yards rushing so far, which is like unreal. And I mean, he still has a ways from like the single season rushing yards. Like that was actually the thing was like Mark Sanders. Like he had like 20. Yeah. Barry Sanders, like 2,800 yards. But I mean, he hasn't slowed down and that's the crazy thing. He averages 5.7 yards per, or no, excuse me. He averages nine yard, 9.9 yards per carry in his first six games. And then he averaged five point, like five and a half, five and three quarters or something like that in the last five games. He's had three 200 yard performances in the first six games of the season and just one off of this past five. So I don't know, Josh. I mean, Aston Johnson to me has been looking like a straight animal throughout this entire season. And realistically, I, I would honestly give him the Heisman. That's my honest opinion. Yeah, yeah. Barry Sanders' record was 2,850 yards in the regular season, 42 touchdowns. Uh, I don't know if that was total touchdowns or if that was just rushing touchdowns. I think it was but, just rushing. But, yeah, I mean, Ashton Genty is Genty is only like less than 600 yards away from that. It could be reached, but not during the regular season now. So that's kind of a bummer because he was on such a hot streak. Still, yeah. 2,288 yards in the regular season just Ridiculous. for rushing alone. Yeah, absolutely insane. 7.3-yard average 
Mm. Every time you hand him the ball, you hand him the ball every time you're get, getting a first down every two plays and then some. That's 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 crazy. Uh, you know, and yeah, I mean, just a huge game. You could tell that they were really trying to do something special with him against Oregon State the way that they ran him. Uh, ran it 37 times, 226 yards with a six-yard average. Got himself in the end zone once. Uh, he, he's got 20 total rushing touchdowns on the season, too, which is just another another stat that is just absolutely crazy for him also has a one receiving touchdown to add add to that so he doesn't receive the ball out of the backfield a whole lot only just over 100 yards on the season but yeah is in terms of of rushing i'm I'm right there with you i think that he deserves it and i understand you know i i feel i feel like people who argue for travis hunter act like those of us who are arguing against him just totally discredit his ability and that's not at all what I'm trying to say. I think Ashton uh, Ashton Genty is just a freak of nature that goes out on the, on that that field and he wins his team games. Uh, and and I think he's a special player that could be that special anywhere he goes. And I think the way mm-hmm. that he's performed this season, it's absolutely deserving. I mean, he's sure. he has broken records and he's he has done things that are unseen on the, on the football field. And people want to act like what Travis Hunter is doing is totally unseen and has never been seen before. And yeah, he's taking a lot of snaps. That's impressive. But I don't think 100% of those snaps, he looks elite. He really doesn't lead in a ton of categories in, in, in either side of the ball, you know, and, and I'm saying like leading is in top five in mm-hmm. either any, you know, big time categories. He's a, a phenomenal player and he does play at a very high level of both sides of the ball, I don't think he shows elite talent on both sides of the ball the way that people want to write him off to be. That that's all I'm saying about Travis Hunter, and and the dude is is amazing, and I never want to take that away from him. But I just I personally feel like if Genty doesn't get this Heisman, to me, it's another snub two years in a row mm-hmm. of a guy that I believe gets snubbed. It's just the way that he plays, the goals that he was chasing after. It's 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 a phenomenal season for you know something that we've never seen not that we never but we haven't seen uh, a player this far and of course the the honorable mentions of of cam ward and dylan gabriel both deserving to go to new york in my opinion both have been phenomenal players and both have done extremely well and won a lot of games dylan gabriel led the oregon ducks to an undefeated season this year Mm. and and just being smart with the ball when it mattered the most and improving with his team uh you know i just i just think it's it's very obvious that the top top two are travis hunter Ashton Genty, if I were to put money on it, Travis Hunter's probably going to win it for the popularity, much like what we saw from, I think, personally, I think the popularity was on Jaden Daniels' side last year. And, and I think it's going to be the same way this year. But, I mean, I, I want to bring this up to you here, Josh. You know, I was reading earlier that there was a thing that I saw from um, one the one guy, I like saying his name, Scadaboo, from Arizona State. I know there was talks of him getting getting to go to New York. I, I understand, like, you get the opportunity to go to New York. You're not guaranteed, obviously, to win a Heisman or stuff like that. But, I mean, Josh, do you think he's another kind of candidate that you can that you can see getting into this Heisman talk? Or- yeah, I, I mean, Scadaboo, yeah. I mean, that's what, that's a guy that I know you always love to bring him up and bring Scadaboo. up his name. Yeah, and, and another guy that has had an amazing season, and specifically in the back end of that season, really mm-hmm. broke out. You know, he put himself close to 1,400 total yards. He'll break that by the time he gets to the, the title game. So rushing touchdowns on the season. He's also been a threat out of the backfield a little bit, you know, and, and he's just an all-around player. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely a dude that I think deserves to be in that honorable mention to me. Not the type of season I would say that deserves yeah. making the trip to New York, unless they were to open it up to five. I, I don't know who I would put in there for my fifth favorite. So Scadaboo, I, I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great honorable mention to bring up. Two hundred forty-seven yards on the carry, been been hauling that rock and uh, doing a really good job of it too. So mm-hmm. it's he's he's been on a team that has been really impressive to watch that team and what they've been able to do with with Levitt uh, being really smart with the ball and doing what he's got to do. You know, it, it, that whole Arizona State team it was was really impressive this year, mm-hmm. and I don't even think that Kenny Dillingham saw this coming from his team and (laughs) being as good as, as they were. And and he even mentioned that, you know, it wasn't until first game, one of his players come up to him and tell him like, let's go win this thing. And he's like, 
wait a second, we got some dudes with that dog in them that want to come out here yeah. and win games. Yeah. You know, like they're they're ready for this. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that that's something that, you know, Scadaboo is definitely one of those guys. You got to mention Arizona State, a team that, you know, starting off the season the way that they did. I know Wyoming's not a good team, but they just, pl- you know, pl- busted open the gates with the 48 to 7 win right mm-hmm. there uh, and just kept on winning, too. So, very fun team to, to watch for sure. And Scadaboo is a fun player to watch, too. 100%. Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be interesting to see who ends up going to New York. It's going to be ir- interesting to see who makes it to the college football playoffs. And like I said, these home stadium environments in the college football playoffs. I don't care if you're a fan of the twelve team playoff or not. You have to be a fan of that. Mm-hmm. That's that's super exciting. Really excited to see who it all boils down to. Be we've got our opinions, and our opinions can be expressed all we want, but we really have no control over it unless you actually have a vote to get a team in. And so it's very exciting. We're going to have to keep our eyes on it and keep it peeled. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you would go ahead and give it jump over to the Apple podcast, Spotify, follow us on there and give us a five star review. Best way to help us over there. You can check out everything we do at rising com. Again, this is rising to the occasion. Uh, I'm Josh. This is Jeremy. We're very excited to have you in here with us. Thank you so much for everything. We'll catch you next time.